Good evening. Are you glad to be in the Lord's house? Say amen. amen. Now, some of you are looking up here at me and saying, who is that, that big man and what is he doing in our church? <laughs> My name is Sammy Thomas, and uh, for the last 37 years, it's uh, been my privilege to be a part of the staff of First Baptist Church of Indian Trail. Now, most of you know Dr. Mike Whitson. For the last 34 years, he's been my pastor. And so for those of you who want to extend sympathy to me about that, I'll see you after service. <laughs> uh, it's been a wonderful privilege to serve the Lord under his leadership and ministry and a part of that church for many years. And uh, I am grateful for the opportunity to, to be with you for the next couple nights and uh, to lead the music. I'm so grateful to your minister of music for sharing this uh, time with me and to your pastor and to Maurice Henson. He's been my friend a long time. And so we are honored to be here. Now I'm going to ask you uh, this week to sing, not just stand there and look at me, but sing. You know, this is a beautiful, one of the most beautiful buildings I think I've ever been in. Sound will carry well in here. So if we'll stand up and sing well, folks going out the road out there can hear us praising the Lord. Now, I may do things a little different than what you're used to. And for the, if I do something and you don't like that, the good news is I'll be gone in a couple of days. <laughs> and you can just go back to the way you were doing things. If I, me if I mess up, which is highly likely, just look, just look up there and say, well, bless his heart, and, and we'll be all right. Now, we're going to sing a couple songs together, so I'm going to give you two hymn numbers. The words will be on the screen if you want to look at that, and if you don't want to do that, you want your hymnal, then I'll ask you to turn to hymn 499, but to also take a spare finger and put it at hymn 295 because I'm not going to quit between them unless I run out of breath. So we'll sing a couple verses of victory in Jesus, and we'll go into all hail King Jesus. So will you stand with me, please, and let's sing together. Before we do that, I have a question. How many of you just sang the best, the loudest, the strongest you've ever sung in your life? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's kind of what I thought. Now, I'm going to ask you two things. First, find somebody around you. I'm going to ask Miss Ann to play a verse in just a minute and for you to shake hands with those around you. And if somebody was really singing, Tell them they ought to be in the choir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if they weren't, say, I'll sing louder if you will. Will you do that? <laughs> All right, so greet each other, and then we'll sing that third stanza. <laughs>
are so excited about our revival, and our revival theme is Restore. And uh, so I pray that if there's anything in your life that you look at and you go, you know what, God, I just I need you in my life because he is the only one that can restore everything in your life through Jesus Christ. And uh, welcome. It is so good to have you. I know we got some guests here tonight. Um, on the way out, there is a guest packet. We'd like for you to have some information about our church. Uh, but please pick that up. One of our ushers will get that to you. But I am so grateful for Sammy and your team being here. And the choir, wow, uh, beautiful. Uh, but it is just great to be here in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to read a passage of scripture. And then uh, I would like to pray. And then we're going to turn it back over to Sammy. In Psalm 146, it says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in uh, son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to the earth. In that very day his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Oh, what a great uh, psalm. Tonight we come to praise the Lord. And we come to, to turn our lives over to him. This is a time to uh, let, you know, Maurice preached a sermon this morning. We've got to let things go. We, we've got to forgive. We've got to not hang on to these sins and these things that are in our lives that uh, so often just haunt us uh, for years and years. Tonight is the night to let it go and praise the Lord. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll turn it back over to Sammy. Father, we come to you tonight excited about what you're going to do. Uh, you know, we are feeble people, uh, imperfect people. But we are vessels for your glory. And tonight I pray that you would fill us up and may your spirit just be poured out on this place. May you be glorified in every word, every song, every, every word that is spoken in the message. God, I thank you so much for your grace. I thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross on our behalf that we could have life and life everlasting. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you uh, for the mercy that you poured out on us, that, that grace uh, that we don't deserve. And so, Lord, have your way tonight in our lives. Have your way. Let us um, welcome your spirit uh, into this place and into our lives. Lord, thank you so much. Uh, may we praise you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what does restore mean to me? Um, I'm, I'm uh, humbled uh, to realize that even though I was christened into a church as a child, as a baby, actually, and confirmed as a young teenager, um, that I was missing the most important part. Um, matter of fact, here, uh, Harry says, we are a Bible-believing church. So I say, you're more than a Bible-believing church. You're also a Bible-reading church. And, and it is inside those pages, taking the time to sit down and read them and put it all together and make sense of 
what's in there and and open your thoughts and your eyes and your brain to what's between the pages that's what some churches sometimes miss and and I feel restored uh, learning what the you know, being able to pick some of those passages apart in Sunday school class um, and having so much more meaning added to them uh, I do feel restored and and being baptized has added so so much more to my life mm. um, that's really such a blessing and and it's a commitment that you make to yourself and you also uh, make it to God you 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 walk through that door, that open invitation door that he has, and he reaches out, and you put your hand in his, and he restores you. And wow, For this, it is uh, I never really realized person. that there is a place and there is a way that they just take you as you are. Uh, the door is open. God says, and Jesus says, the door is open. Uh, I invite you in. Uh, come. Just walk through the door. And uh, I, I welcome you with loving arms uh, and take you into my fold. What a, what a blessing that is. And there are uh, life swirls. Uh, out there and we do our day-to-day -day thing and keep our families fed and keep our cars running and keep our the roofs on our houses and all those crazy things that swirl um, God has a plan and and uh, you know he says just come to me uh, as you are you don't have to be perfect you don't have to be anything special uh, just come and I do every day a thousand times a day say thank you thank you Amen. Amen. I don't know of any better song to sing behind that than hymn 552 my Jesus, I love thee. We'll go from that into 555, into 557. I will never go more than you have fingers. So tonight we are going to go three. Let's stand and sing this wonderful hymn. <laughs>
Uh, during this week, uh, we're going to be taking up love offerings uh, each night uh, for our uh, song leaders and for our pastors. And so uh, tonight, I'm going to ask the ushers to come on down. And I'm going to ask Shay if you'd lead us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this, this wonderful day you've given us. And Lord, for this revival. And we pray for the, the music leaders and the, and the speakers that, Lord, that your will would be done and our lives would be touched. Thank you for this money and just pray that it furthers your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Choir's been working really hard to learn a song we sent them a couple weeks ago that's probably my all-time favorite song to sing. I pray the words will be a blessing to you. Not 
but my will thy Lord. The answer I may never know why he ever loved me so that to an old rugged cross he would go for who am I he came to me he came to me when I could not come y'all did a wonderful job. <laughs> well, goodness, I feel, I asked the choir when we practiced that before service, if somebody could have oxygen ready for me when we finished, and I don't see anybody coming forward. But I want to introduce you to two folks who uh, came with me tonight that mean a whole lot in our life. The first one is my bride of 30 years. Helen, if you'll come, I want everybody to see my pretty wife. <laughs> I outpunted my coverage, and I know that very well. And I'm grateful for Helen and all she means to me, and we've been partners in ministry a long time, and I'm grateful for her life. A few years ago, we uh, began to have a couple to visit our church who ended up joining becoming a part of the music ministry of our church. That was Bob and Jeannie Johnson. And uh, they have sung the gospel all over the world. And a couple years ago, the Lord moved Bob to the big choir in heaven. But Jeannie has continued to be faithful. She's, she sung with the Spear family for many years. She was on television with PTL. She's been on all the Gaither videos. And we just love her and are grateful for her friendship. Jeannie, if you would come join us. And uh, you're going to love her as we do. And she's going to be a blessing to you. And I'm just grateful that she would come with us. And uh, we're going to sing a few songs. And Jeannie's going to take some lead. And Helen and I are going to kind of be her doo-wops a little bit. 
to uh, to try to, to to back her up some, but you're going to be blessed by her voice. Okay. Oh yeah, she is. Isn't she? <laughs> That's I your water that, too. That this is my water, yeah. my clinic. <laughs> All right. Also, let me tell you. Let me just, wait just a minute. I forgot one. The flower girl from our wedding is here. Oh, uh, back at the sound booth, Beth, wave it, everybody. Beth Regan, she's uh, uh, she's been like our family. She's she's been a part of our family for a long time. She was our flower girl when we got married, and she's like a daughter to us. And uh, thank you, Beth, for coming. You can start the track over now. That was that my water. Okay, okay. Promise to hold my hand. He's promised to help me stand. When the valley's too low and the river's too wide, I know that he will lead me to the other side. This promise says, light my way. Never leave my feet to stray. Living in his word, I'll overcome. Standing on his promises one by one. I may have to walk. I know that he will lead me to the other side. His promise is life, my way. Never leave my feet too straight. Living in his word, I'll overcome. Standing on his promises one by one. I may have to walk on the water with him. I don't have to worry. I know that he will lead me to the other side. His promise is life, my way. Never leave my feet to stay. Living in his word, I'll overcome. Standing on his promises one by one. Living in his word, I'll overcome. Standing on his promises one by one. Oh, the 
Once I was clothed in the rags of my sin, wretched and poor, lost and lonely within, but with one trust, compassion, the King of all. when I was a little fellow, probably about eight years old, in a revival, I can take you to the, there's an old song that says, I can tell you now the time, and I can take you to the place where the Lord saved me by his wonderful grace. And I can, I can take you back to my home church where I was sitting with my daddy on the Friday night of revival meeting over 50 years ago, and tugged at my daddy's arm and said, I need to be saved. And went down and the Lord saved me. And you know, I'm so thankful that when what he does, he does right. right. And when he saved me and it is an eight-year-old boy, that was enough. Amen. And I'm, I praise him for that. I thank him for that. He's been so good to me. He's let me see him do things that I could never have imagined. And I, I don't understand sometimes why he's blessed me like he has. Why he's blessed all of us like he has. Because there's not a one of us that are not so far beyond, blessed beyond what we deserve because we don't deserve anything. But through his grace, he's blessed us. He's taken care of us. And he's supplied our every need. Jeannie, I feel like it's time for you to sing the longer I serve him. Will you do that now? If you and you share a word if you want to and then we'll change to another song. Um, thank you for letting us be here tonight. 
to sing his praises and to thank him for bringing us this far. God's been good to me. Uh, like Sammy said, I lost my husband about two and a half years ago. And to be perfectly honest with you, it hasn't been a fun time for me. Because ordinarily, he would be standing right here beside me, singing with me. But you know what? He's in a place now that I don't begrudge him one bit. It's a place free of any kind of sickness, any kind of disappointment, any kind of struggle. So I thank the Lord that my husband is seeing those things right now. One day I'll get to see the same things. But I'm thankful that um, I've served the Lord many, many years. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and tell you that I'm, I'm 75 years old. But God has been with me every moment, every day, every hour of my life. And the more I serve him, the more I sing about him, the more I want to do it. It has gotten sweeter. And I give him glory. I give him praise. And I give him honor. Thank you, Lord. God is good, isn't he?
to host you. I love you. I love you. Had it not been for my church, for this man right here, I don't know where I'd be today. It pays to belong to the body of Christ. Amen. Yes, it does. So long I'd searched for life's meaning Enslaved by the world and my greed When the door of my prison was opened by love For the ransom I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. Oh, I traded my shackles for a glory. From the guilt that I carry From the dark, empty life I'm set free For when I met Jesus He made me complete He forgot the foolish child I used to be I'm free from the fear of tomorrow I'm free from the guilt of the past Oh, I traded my shackles for There's a song that we sing with our choir at home that Jeannie sings the solo on. And I just, seems like as I've worked on getting these services ready and prayed and asked the Lord for uh, direction, I, had, I found a lot of songs about heaven and uh, came up with a lot of, you'll be hearing a lot about heaven in the next night or two. And uh, it's just what was on my heart. And this is a wonderful song. And I know we've worked Jeannie pretty hard tonight, but I think she's handled it pretty good. And uh, and let me just share quickly, too. I I asked if it was all right and asked Jeannie if she had some CDs that she could bring with her, that if some of you would like to have a a CD of her recording, that it'll be available out, I guess, out there after after service. And that would be a blessing to her if you could, uh, if you were interested in that. And I'd like to just hug all of your necks. (laughs) (laughs) When I get up to heaven. Oh, I've heard a lot of singing, 
about that land beyond the blue and the place that Jesus promised he'd prepare for me and you and I've heard a lot of people talk about that land to be so I made a little list of things I especially want to see. Oh, I want to see St. Peter when I reach that land on high. I want to ask him for the address of my mansion in Then I'll stand upon the curbstone along the streets of gold. I'll look my mansion over where I'll live while ages roll. Oh, can I get up to heaven? That I made it through all right. And I know he'll be so happy, for he often prays for me. That the Lord would make me just. I'm intending to be present when the marriage feast is set. Oh, I want to watch my Savior as he takes and breaks the bread. And I want to see the light that shines upon his blessed face. As he lifts his nail scarred hand and leads in saying, Grace. Oh, when I get up to heaven, when I fall in on the grace, when I find he stands in glory.
going through the alphabet. When he finally comes to my name, reads it loud and clear, I'm gonna stand upon my tiptoes, raise my hand and shout, I'm here. Oh, when I get up to heaven, when I go I was just sitting there thinking, it seemed like every time I preached at Indian Trail, uh, Bobby, Bob, and Jeannie Johnson sang. And I used to think, boy, I was really blessed that they sang before I preached. And then I figured it out. They wanted y'all to sing because they knew the next part was going to be all that weak, you know. And so they didn't want to, <laughs> they wanted to start off with a good, strong thing. But I appreciate you. And uh, I, I, it's, uh, Bob when he passed away he had a stroke and about six months later I had a stroke and uh, I remember on a Tuesday um, they told me they didn't think I was going to make it and I think it was what day did y'all go to Mississippi and sing was it the weekend after that yeah they, they went and, uh, and uh, they came by and a guy Steve Helms was with them and and this friend of mine I used to play golf with, and uh, they came by, and I had I couldn't move anything on my left side. It was all gone. I couldn't uh, do anything. And uh, I remember they came in, and I saw Jeannie, and I so appreciated y'all coming because I was pretty low right then. I didn't think I was ever going to be able to do anything with my left side again. And uh, Steve was sitting there, and uh, all of a sudden I moved my toe. <laughs> And I busted out crying <laughs> right in the middle of everything. And Steve went out in the hall, and he come back in, and he said, what's wrong? And I said, I just moved my toe. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but thank the Lord, I got to move my other toes, and I moved my left hand a little bit now. I still walk with a limp, but I can't wait till I get to heaven. I'm going to throw this brace away. And... Uh, I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to that day. Yeah. This morning, the uh, Lord gave me a message to share, and I don't even like to do the message I did this morning, but uh, the Lord wanted that, and the Lord honored our time together. And I promised you tonight I wasn't going to be that long. So uh, y'all going to have to hold on. My daddy used to be an auctioneer, and I can move when I have to, all right? And we're in Psalms 51. We're in Psalms 51. You say, you going to read that whole chapter? No, y'all going to have to follow with me because I'm going to read some of it in just a minute. 
I, you know, I, I, they, they, up at the Indian Trail, some of the guys up there call me the storytelling preacher. And I like to tell stories. I remember when I was growing up, when the preacher would tell stories, I could keep up with it. When he started on that other stuff, I had to get back to my tic-tac-toe, all right, amen? But uh, so I could hang with the story. So I, I want to tell you a little story. And uh, I call uh, the sermon Steps Back to God, but on the uh, uh, little thing I gave him, I call this the woodpile, or the duck in the woodpile. There's a story about a little boy and his sister. Uh, they were visiting their grandparents, and their, his granddaddy gave Johnny a new slingshot. Y'all heard this? And he gave him some pellets. And what does the boy do with the new slingshot? Same thing he does with a new air rifle or a rifle. He shoots things with it, amen? And so this little boy, he was pulling this new slingshot out, and it was a good one. And he took a pop at a squirrel or two, and he shot at a rabbit, couldn't hit it. So he set up some drink cans, and he got where he could hit one of those pretty good. And he started to get the feel of it and the confidence about it. And so then came his grandmother's duck walking by. And so he thought he'd shoot and hit it in the body. Guess where he hit it? In the head. Guess what happened to the duck? The Lord called him home. <laughs> and so uh, he looked around and see if anybody saw him, and he couldn't see anyone. So he took the duck and hid it in the woodpile. And then he looked around, and his sister, Sally, was watching. And he thought, and he went back in the house, and so he rushed over with tears in his eyes and said, Please don't tell Grandma I killed her duck. And so his sitter, sister didn't say anything. They went in the house and uh, after lunch, and Grandma looked over at Sally and said, Sally, uh, would you wash the dishes after dinner? And she said, Grandma, Johnny has been wanting to wash the dishes for a long time. <laughs> And she turned around and mouthed, the duck. <laughs> and so Johnny washed the dishes, and when that was all taken care of, uh, she sat back in her chair, and then Grandma said, now listen, for supper tonight, you know, this is country, you know, in country you eat dinner at lunch, and then you have supper at night. Y'all with me on that? Now, when I say that up in Indian Trail, I have to explain this, because they like lunch and dinner, right? But we do dinner and supper. Well, she said, I want you to, I want to teach you how to cook, Sally, so if you'll just hang here, I want you to help me prepare supper. And she said, Grandma, i got to tell you something. Johnny has always wanted to learn how to cook. <laughs> and she looked over at Johnny and said, and Johnny stood up and said, Grandma, can I help you cook? <laughs> well, it went on like that, and then a day or two later, Grandpa looked over at Sally and said, How, Sally, you the oldest, I need you to help me bail hay. Now, if I'd been Shay Tankersley, he'd jump and run and done that. He loves to do that kind of stuff. But uh, she looked and said, Grandpa, you know what he said? Johnny would love to bail that hay. And so... He couldn't take it anymore. So he went to his grandma and said, Grandma, i got to tell you something. And she said, what is it, Johnny? She said, well, Grandma, when I got my new slingshot and I was practicing, I shot at your duck and I shot it in the head and killed it. And I buried it in the woodpile. And grandma said, saw the whole thing. <laughs> and he was shocked. And she wasn't upset. And he looked at her and said, Grandma, how come you didn't say something? And she said, I was just watching and wondering how long it was going to take you to come around to telling about your mistake and quit letting Sally take advantage of you anymore. Uh, you know, I could have titled this sermon, Ducks in the Woodpile, but I'm not going to do that. David in Psalm 51, he committed sin. Matter of fact, the sin he committed is the greatest known sin that any man or woman ever committed, the adultery between him and Bathsheba. So he gets to Psalms 51, and he's had all he could take. The Lord punished him, 
He's received tenfold from what happened. I mean, he did a terrible thing. When you read and know what David did, Bathsheba, you remember the story? He saw her out bathing on top of a uh, building, and he lusted after her, and he knew it would be wrong as long as her husband was alive for him to pursue her in any way. You know what he did? Sent her husband, who was a soldier, put him in the front lines, put him in the heat of the battle, because he knew there what would happen. He'd lose his life. Guess what happened? He lost his life. And then we come to Psalms 51. And uh, not only did that had happened, God had sent a prophet to him. Now, I'm going to teach you a principle here in a few minutes. The sins that we cover, God will uncover. Now, the sins we uncover, God will cover. Now, remember that. That's a true statement. Now, y'all can go to sleep for about 15 minutes here, and I'll be done. But you've got to remember that. That's the sermon. The sins that we cover, God will uncover. The sins we uncover, God will cover. Are y'all ready? Here we go. Uh, uh, first point of this message tonight, and I'm doing the fast break on this thing, is I want to talk a little bit about sin committed sins committed now uh you know sin is a terrible thing sometimes we think it's not it is a serious thing and and it's a serious thing in the life of a believer it's a terrible thing the soul that sins the bible says well what it's going to die the soul that sins is going to die and, and you know if we don't repent of our sins and turn to the lord jesus we're going to die as a matter of fact when you commit sin you're already spiritually dead you know that? You've died. You're separated from God. That's what it means. The soul that sins is died. And the Bible teaches that all of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. It's a serious thing. It is also a serious thing when the believer sins. Now we think that because God has covered our sins and we have repented of them, then as a believer, it's not that big of a thing. Oh, yes, it is. It is a serious thing. What happens when we commit sins? Now, you're going to have to follow with me. I want you to look at verse 1 in 51, and I'm going to go down through here and tell you what the Bible says sin does. What happens when we commit sins? The first thing I want to show you is in verse 1. David says, Have mercy upon me. Verse chapter 51, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions that's an interesting word some important words here the first one is transgression you know what that word means means step over the line if you're playing football and you're running the ball down the sideline and you step out of bounds what happens they stop the game and they don't restart the game until they bring the ball back into where you stepped out of bounds that's what a transgression is when you step out of bounds as a child of God or as a human being, then everything stops until you deal with the fact that you went out of bounds. That's a transgression. It's, it's, God has drawn a line in the sand, and it says things like, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. or Thou shalt not all these things. And he draws these lines and when we step over them, we're out of bounds. It's a transgression. Everything stops until we deal with that. Here's the second thing he said. Verse 2. He says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. The word iniquity means twisting or perverting. It means to take something that God has made beautiful and make it something distorted and put it together in an unnatural condition. Now, I see that happening all the time with couples. Uh, I had a couple came to me one time, and, and they got saved in our church, Sammy. If I called his name, you know who he was. And uh, he'd, he was a singer, and he tried to put together a quartet. They couldn't ever stay tuned up all the time, but you know how that works. You probably know who I'm talking about by now. And anyway, uh, they both got saved. They lived together. And he came... And we were talking one day, and he, we got to be good friends. 
And he said, I, he says, should I get married? Should we get married? And I said, uh, yeah. And uh, they were living together. And he says, what do you think about it? I said, well, it's not a big deal what I think about it. I need to tell you what God thinks about it. And so we thought, he thought, and he said, you know, we're living together. We're in love. I said, yeah, you're also in lust. And he said, is that bad? I said, well, yeah, uh, according to God it is. And, uh, and he said, well, should we get married? They just got saved. They didn't know no better. I mean, you know what? Lost folks don't know that's wrong. I mean, they don't know. And we sometimes think before we can lead somebody to the Lord, we got to get them separated so we can get saved. No, no. God's just like us. He cleans his fish after he catches them. All right? And so they got under conviction. They'd heard Mike preach. And so one Sunday morning after the service, Mike married them. You remember the big old red-headed boy? He used to sing in the bars and nightclubs. And he got saved. And they got married. Uh, iniquity is when you do things outside of God's boundaries, like live together and not be married because you've committed yourself together for a lifetime. That's a twisting. Now, it's a, it's a great thing, but it's not right till you put it in the bounds where God established it. It's iniquity. The next thing that he says to them is it, it, it's, it's, an, it's an iniquity, it's sin. And then he says it's sin. Uh, and sin means to fall short. It means to miss the mark. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not only does sin come short, uh, sin leaves a mark. You know, when you're in sin, it leaves an impact on your life. And the effects of sin, many people falsely believe you can sin. Uh, when it's over, it's over. That's not right. When you sin, the consequences of sin carries on. I heard a mother tell the story. Uh, she looked out the window one day. She must have been up here in River Falls. And her kids were playing with two skunks out in the yard. And she said, oh, my goodness. And she raced out on the front porch and says, run, kids, run. And each one of them picked up a skunk and started running. <laughs> That's kind of how sin is. You pick up a skunk, what's going to happen? You're going to smell like a skunk. And it's going to leave its stain, and it's going to leave its smell. When you pick up sin, it's going to leave its mark. Whatever you did, it's going to follow you, and it's going to go with you. And David said, as he talked, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Now, you don't know what the effects of sin are. Verse 3 says, David says, my sin's ever before me. Sin affects your eyes. Verse 6, he said, Behold, the, thou desires truth in my inward part. Sin affects your mind. Verse 8, he says, Make me hear joy and gladness. Sin affects your hearing and what you hear. Verse 8 again, the last part says, That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Sin affects your body. I've watched people living in unconfessed sin become, become old right before my eyes. You ever seen that? I mean, they're living in sin and they're captivated by it and they're enslaved to it and it begins to age them and have a bodily impact upon them. Verse 10, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew, renew a right spirit within me. Sin affects your body and your heart. It changes you. Uh, verse 14, sin also affects your tongue, your lips, and your mouth. Oh, Matthew Henry, y'all ever heard of that commentary? There's an old sermon. I've heard a number of preachers preach it. Here's the outline. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Sin will teach you more than you want to know. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And it will cost you more than you want to pay. That's a good verse. David says, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Cleanse my heart. Make me clean. I need to be cleansed of this. Now I want to tell you what you do with committed sin. You ready? 
David was a man after God's own heart. You know, when I read the story of David and I think about him, I think, man, how can that guy be a man after God's own heart for all that he did? How can he do that? Well, I'm going to tell you how he could. He confessed his sin. He confessed his sin. Now, I want you to look at verse 3. He says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. The Old Testament equivalent to John 1, 9, it talks about, and there's a scripture that says if we, in 1 John 1, 9, it says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us of all righteous, unrighteousness. When you sin as a Christian, you've got two choices. You can cover your sin, or you can uncover your sin. God's chastisements comes when we cover our sin. You ever done that? Try to say, no, I, I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to tell God. It's kind of like the couple that went out and they were about to do something. They were commit adultery one with the other. And, and this couple, and the, before they went to bed, the lady said, come on, let's pray. And <laughs> the man said, don't tell him. You know what? That's how stupid we are sometimes. I think we, we think when we're about to do something that's wrong in the dark that God doesn't see it. God's looking on. God sees it. And I tell you what else God does. When a child of God starts living in sin, uh, he's going to come for you. You know, I grew up in a home uh, where they still believed in spanking. Matter of fact, my mom and daddy would probably be in jail now if they lived today for child abuse. I remember when they used to spank me, they'd get them little old keen hickories. You ever heard that term? Pull my pants down and mark my legs. You ever had your legs marked with a keen hickory? Man, I have. You say, well, that's a child abuse. Well, I'll tell you what, it got my attention. I didn't do things more than once uh, because I knew why. I'm going to tell you, the worst whipping I ever got came when I committed sin before the Lord. I'm going to tell you the truth. The Lord will tear you up. Yeah. Now, he'll let you know when you've committed sin, if you're walking with him and you ignore his conviction, he's going to chastise you. That word means he's going to, make, get, he's going to punish you because he wants you to do something. You know, my grandboy came to my house, and I got a wood stove. And I kept telling him, I said, Kate, don't touch the stove. It's hot. I looked in there a few minutes, and he was sitting in the corner holding his hand. And he looked at me, and he said, it's hot. <laughs> Guess what? He didn't touch that stove anymore. He knew it was hot. And I stuck his hand in a pail of water. I'm telling you, when sin is hot, and when you touch it uh, for a season, you think it's fine. But you can't live that way as a child of God. God's going to come for you. Now, I want to tell you something about sin. It's a personal matter. It's between you and God. Uh, David comes to God. He didn't undergone chastening for a year. He didn't want to do that anymore. And so he says, I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. Nine times in that chapter. Go back and count. Nine times. He says, I, my sins are ever before me. And he acknowledged his personal responsibility. Now, there's a lesson for there for all of us. When it comes to sin, it's the big eye. It's the big eye. You know what we like to do when it comes to sin? We like to blame somebody else. You ever do that? Guess what Adam did? When the Lord came looking for him, he hid in the garden. And when he confronted Adam, what did Adam say? It was the woman who made me do it. It wasn't him. It, wasn't just, it was him. And we try to blame everyone. And Johnny, I mean his sister, sat, she got all over him. But, you know, it, it was his sin. And he had to say, Grandma, I, I, put, I killed your duck and put it in the wood pile. You remember what the grandma did? said, I've been waiting on you to tell me that. And she said, he said, you're not upset? He said, no, I just wanted to see how long you was going to let that sin or that incident direct your life by your sister's actions. Now, I'm going to tell you about sin. It's a theological matter. It occurs between you and God. 
It has nothing to do with Bathsheba bathing on the top of a roof. wasn't her fault. It was his fault. He committed the sin. And when he sinned against her and her husband, he also sinned against who? God. So it's a theological problem. Now in this chapter, there are three beautiful pictures, and I'm going to close with this. I want us to look at sin cleansed. There are three pictures. The first one is, the words are, he blot out my transgression. Now that word blot is an interesting word. Uh, some of you, I don't know if you've ever done this. Y'all, any of y'all ever have them old ringer washers? You have to wash them things. Y'all, some of y'all don't have a clue what I'm talking about. There used to be one on the back porch where I grew up out in the country. Had a, and before then, yeah, you'd have to wash them things and you'd have to put them through the ringer. You ever heard that term, you, I've been through the ringer? Well, there's a reason. That's the background of that. Now, before you had ringer washers, you remember what the folks used to, how they used to wash their clothes? They'd go out on the river bank and they would what? Beat them clothes on a river rock. That's the word blot out. Uh, they would blot, they would clean their clothes. They would beat the dirt out of the garment. That's what David's asking God to do for him. Blot out by transgression. Beat it out. Then he says, wash me. Another interesting word means wash me completely. Here sin has the idea of a disease. He wanted to be cleansed. He was saying, I want to be cleansed of my diseases. And the same word is in verse 7. Verse 7 it says, purge. Same word. Different translation. Purge me, and then he says, cleanse me with hyssop. Now, hyssop was a plant that grew in the cracks around that holy land over there and in the walls, and they would cut it out. It was much like a paintbrush. It's what they would use. You remember when the, the angel was, Passover angel was coming and they were about to be released from Israel? They told them, take hyssop, which was a plant like a paintbrush, and to dip it in what? A goat's blood, and where did they need to paint it? Over the doorpost. And when the death angel passed over, I mean, came, what did it do? Where the doorpost was, they passed over. If it wasn't on there, what happened? The oldest son died. So it was called the Passover. So he says here, cleanse me and purge me. And when the Israel came out of the land, he's saying, cleanse me or purge me from my blood. Now here's hyssop again. You ready? He, then he says, cleanse me with hyssop. When somebody had lepr leprosy, the uh, first thing they did was put them outside the gate because leprosy was contagious. And so when they went outside, you know, the, you, you ever seen anyone have leprosy? Uh, I've seen some folks, you know, that their joints just start rotting off and they get, it's just a horrible disease. In Leviticus 14, they had a cleansing ceremony. And what they did, they would take the blood of, of, a, of a goat or an animal and they would take water, and they would mix it together, and they would take this hyssop, which was a brush, and they would stick it down into that bucket or whatever they had that in, and they would pull it up, and they would tie it to a bird, and the bird would fly off, and the blood and the, hit, the water would drip down, and then the leper would say, I am clean, I am clean. And many of them, after they went through that ceremony, God healed them. And so David here, with that in his background, he says, Lord, cleanse me with hyssop. Now I want you to watch this. 2,000 years ago, there stood a young man named Jesus. They spat on him. They ran him outside the gates. They slapped him until his blood came out of his mouth. They cut his side. And the blood ran down. You know what he was doing? He was fixing to blot out your sin. Amen. They took him outside the city gates, outside the camp. They nailed him to a cross. Yes. Lifted him up, dropped the cross in a hole. Sun beat down on him, and he said, I thirst. You know what he was doing? He was cleansing your sin Amen. and my sin. 
You see what it costs for God to cleanse and blot out our sins? It's an amazing story, the primitive quartet. They got an old song they sing. It's a bluegrass group, Lois. They sing this song. I do not know the depths of Jesus' love that brought him down to earth from heaven above nor why he paid the price on Calvary and shed his blood for you and me. But this one thing I know, when the crimson blood flowed and dropped to the earth below, it fell on me. That's a great old song. Then they go on and say this one more line. My eyes were opened wide. I saw him crucified. And he knew it was for me he died on Calvary. I like that old song when they sing it. Now, I don't know what ducks you have hidden in the woodpile, but I know this. If you want to be cleansed from sin, you've got to go to verse 9, 1 John 1. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Cleanse us all unrighteousness. Also know this. If you walk in the light, that is, he is the light. That's in verse 7, 1 John. We have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Christ, his Son, keeps cleansing us for sin. Think about preaching this and praying about it. And ask the Lord, have I got any sins in the woodpile? Don't ever ask God that. Time I was nine years old to today, I used to sneak up in the barn with this cure in the back of pull me a leaf off. I remember when I was 12 years old, man offered me some twist tobacco. I don't know if you've ever chewed twist. I thought this was going to make me sick and teach a lesson. Chewed the whole twist, never got it, never had a spell. I've been chewing since I was eight years, nine years old. Ask the Lord, have I got anything left? Sin that I covered. There it is. Couldn't preach a sermon unless I give back to the Lord. That's what I had hidden in the wood pile. I don't know if you got business to do tonight, but I did. Let's bow our head. Father, I pray for this time. And if there's something that we got hid away, Lord, I pray that you'll speak to these dear folks. And Lord, take it away. Commission it to them, whatever it is. They may just come to this altar and just get down on their knees and say, okay, Lord, I'm giving it to you. I got under conviction about, Lord, this thing here, about when my brother came and brought his fifth of rum and set it on this altar the other day. And I thought, man, I'm doing something like that. Lord, I pray that you'll take it away. Tonight's the night. You got something that God's put in your heart right now. I want you to get before him. Tell him what it is. And repent of it to him. Because it's between you and him. Now Lord bless this time we're going to be. We're going to sing. Sammy. What you going to play? Oh the blood of Jesus. I'm going to ask Sammy just to play. You stand. There's something you need to work on. Between you and the Lord. You got work to do. I want you to do it right now. Okay. Here you come and stand.